What's up, Fox Trotters? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. Consider subscribing before you leave. If you're returning, hello. It's so nice to see you all again. You guys look great. Yes, you person who is currently struggling with wrapping paper at this very moment. Tape stuck to everything but the gift. Pro tip, gift bags. My favorite holiday wrapping method. Throw it in a pretty bag with tissue paper and voila, you've done it. You look great. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day and I hope you are ready for a little bit of a longer slash over 20 minute r slash anti MLM adventure. I am so excited to bring this to you today and I hope you are ready. So if you are, grab a drink, maybe a snack, and let's do it. Oh God, I hate this already. Men, not sure what to get that woman or women in your life? I have the answer for you. Hint, hint. It's not flowers. Let me help you grab those last minute gifts. I have many sets in hand. <laughs> uh. Or, or here's, here's a pro tip. How about that special person in your life, whoever they are, how about you find out what they actually want? <laughs> how about you maybe invest a little time into getting to know them and then maybe you would know what they like. <laughs> Um, do not bring them nail stickers from an MLM and also do not bring them, uh, cheap carnations from the grocery store. Now, okay. If you like those carnations and that is special to you, then I apologize. And, and that's great. And that's a wonderful gift for you. But that's my whole point. It's supposed to be about, you know, it's on a person by person basis. <laughs> and I just think on a grand scale, all women do not want carnations or nail stickers. I don't understand. What world is this? <laughs> oh, well, it's 2019, about to be 2020. Woohoo! <laughs> Military spouse Hun got burned. I have a few boxes of LuLaRoe inventory left. I am no longer a LuLaRoe rep, so I'm open for prices. I will not be taking individual pictures simply because it's just too many to take pictures of. If you are interested, my home is open for you to come look. Please message me if you are interested. Thank you! Wow, the fact that there's so much of it that she doesn't even want to bother even trying to take individual pictures of it. Which I get, I mean, usually when we see people trying to sell all their LuLaRoe, they just take a picture of their boutique. <laughs> just like a general inventory photo. So I get it, and I, it's unfortunate that, that this happened, but uh, another positive is that this person is getting out <laughs> of this MLM scene, and we should all be grateful. Or at least getting out of LuLaRoe. Hopefully not into another MLM. Hopefully free from that forever, but at the very least getting out of LuLaRoe. Stop overthinking. If you'll pay your bills late and live on credit cards, why won't you try Ronin Fields? Certainly can't get any worse financially. Most simple way to think about it spoken by blank. Here to help you, not hurt you. First of all, it can get way worse financially if you join an MLM. Oh my god. Uh... Yeah, that, that's that's the worst advice ever. Uh, just to be clear, if you're listening right now and you've been wondering uh, about joining an MLM because you're thinking, oh, well, how, how much worse could it possibly get? Oh my God, so much worse. Do not join this MLM or any. Trust me, it's just, it's not going to be helpful. It's not going to alleviate any of your stress. It's only going to add to your stress. Um, you're going to end up in worse debt than before and you're going to have a bunch of pushy people working above you who are going to probably be not like the nicest people, um, especially when you start getting concerned about spending all this money. They're just going to tell you to keep spending. Ooh, no, no, no. Do not, do not, 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 not. A news anchor turned activist in my area published an email she received. I wonder what MLM they were trying to sell. Amanda, I was scrolling through Facebook recently and I saw a picture of you at an event. I wanted to reach out because I have a program that will help you lose some weight and get healthy. I couldn't help but notice that you're not as small as you were on TV. <laughs> it's important we be better role models to our children. I'm excited to help you. Wow. These Huns are really going for those uh, low blows, you know what I mean? They're really, they're really swinging for those deepest insecurities that most of us have. And they're just coming out with it, just straight out in the second paragraph. The first paragraph has some BS about how they care about you and want you to lose, want you to be healthy because they saw your pictures and something, I don't know. And then in the second paragraph, they, they tell you that 
you're not as small as you were on TV. That's that's like seeing someone being like, wow, when I saw your pictures on Facebook, you looked great. But when I saw you in person, like, it's just, don't, oh God, it's really, what a greasy tactic to use. Yeah, it is important that we be better role models to our children. I agree with you there, hun. That's exactly what I do. Anybody ever had a hun compare her job to your actual job? I'm in content marketing for a large nonprofit. Last night, I met a new woman at a Christmas party hosted by a friend of a friend. She was a guest of a someone who invited her because she's new to our city. We get to talking, but she's only half paying attention because she keeps looking at her phone. I ask about her work, and she tells me the bit about a health and wellness company. It works. And proudly says, I'm working right now. In the middle of the Christmas party? That sounds awful. To explain her face being on her phone. Sorry, I'm patting my dog while I'm reading this for comfort. <laughs> I'm a nice person, so I continue our convo knowing that I'll get it out of, that I'll get out of it soon as I make my rounds. Fun side note about me, I'm really good at getting in and out of conversations. I do believe that's a skill that has served me well over the years. She asks me what I do. I share a brief overview of my work. I say I tell amazing stories of those who have been touched by our organization via video and blog content. I create compelling content across all platforms to market our programming and drive philanthropic efforts. I share these stories with a cause-driven approach meant to further our mission and yada yada. I kid you not, she looks up from her phone and says, so we do the exact same thing. Oh. At first I was offended, but now I'm sad for her. In her mind, bombarding Facebook with copied slash pasted motivational quotes and separating people from their money using buzzwords and empty promises is the same thing as furthering the mission of an organization that has touched the lives of millions of people. Anybody with similar experiences? If so, what industry do you work in and how did he slash she reason that it was the same job? And what is your emotional reaction? Does it make you angry? Sad? Is it humorous to you? Those are all good questions. I'd like to know that as well. Let me know down below if you've had any experience like this where you go to work at your job, you you are out in the world somewhere, and then a hun decides to tell you that your uh, hard-earned money and your job that you work very hard for is the same thing uh, as their MLM, or maybe their MLM's better. It's more of a real job. I don't know. Let me know if you have any of those stories below. I am definitely curious. First of all, before we read anything, $20 for a mug? Who do you think you are? <laughs> I just wanted some leggings, but I think I accidentally joined up. <laughs> they said it, not me. <laughs> I'm okay with that, Lululemon. Oh, oh, it's painful when they try to make jokes like this, but then they just have these. To us, it looks like these flashes of <laughs> self-awareness. <laughs> Like, for a moment in time, they're aware of it, but only enough to uh, try to make light of it and pretend it's just not a thing. But the rest of us are like, uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. So happy to get these kinds of texts. Do you get this excited about your hair care products? OMG, I love my products so far. I was nervous to get them, but I'm so glad I supported you in this new journey because I'm in love, heart eyes. My hair has never been so shiny and soft. Thank you so much. That's amazing. I'm so happy for you. If you have a before and after pic, I'd love to see it. You guys should get yours now. Uh, well... <laughs> This is clearly a plant, and that's something that the actual OP wrote at the top, too. Um, they said, well, this is clearly fake. <laughs> this is between two consultants or uh, just, a, just a, a fake, complete fake conversation. Our slash that happened. <laughs> no way. Uh, also, maybe this is petty. All right. Someone will let you know now. It might be petty. At the very bottom where it says, you should get yours now. Why are there exclamation points after you should? I, I don't understand. You should get yours now. I mean, was that dumb to point out? Probably. Did that have anything to do with this? No. <laughs> oh, God. Buckle up, you guys. This one's going to be a doozy. I've got my hot cup of tea. I have my warm, fuzzy robe. I recommend the same for you. All right, let's do this. I'm convinced Mary Kay destroyed a once good person. About five years ago, I started working for my current employer. 
I started in an entry-level office position and didn't make much money. I started considering taking on a second job for extra money and asked my coworkers if they do that as well, or consider it. Most people just said yes or no, and we did some small talk. Then I asked the Mary Kay hun. Let's call her M. When I asked M if she had a second job or considered one, she replied, I do have a second job. I sell Mary Kay. I made the mistake of saying something about guaranteed hourly pay. M vehemently replied, I have the chance of making way more than that and retiring early. I'll probably make more with Mary Kay than here in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. I left that where it was because I'm not confrontational, but as I walked away, she said, but if you want that opportunity too, let me know and I'll sign you up. Ooh, that's a hard pass. <laughs> I decided against a second job so I could focus on my work, cross-training, and helping around where I could. M focused on Mary Kay and started slacking at work. She would spend hours trying to make sales on her cell phone on company time. She would leave the office to do delivery in nearby buildings, claiming to be going to the restroom on company time. Ooh, she's really lost the plot. She started missing deadlines. Her supervisors, who previously loved her and believed she was a great worker, started expressing concerns. About three and a half years into my experience with this employer, M's supervisor position became available. I had learned many of its responsibilities, which I enjoyed doing. I excitedly applied. M did not apply, even though she was having no success with Mary Kay at this point. Wow, she didn't even apply to her own supervisor job. That's intense. I got the position, I went at it with a flourish, and I'm very successful in it. Congratulations, good for you. I encountered problems supervising M immediately because of her inability to complete her job satisfactorily. It's not that I don't know her job and expected more out of her than was possible. Remember, I had cross-trained and had actually done her job myself. I sympathized, gave advice, tried to help her meet her goals, paid for team outings to build morale, did an employee appreciation newsletter each month to honor good work. I went out of my way to find ways to feature M to show effort is appreciated, etc., in an attempt to get her back on track with caring about her job. Yet, she continued to miss deadlines, and we continued to receive poor quality work from her. Wow, can I work for you? You sound like a great supervisor. Like, you're doing all the things. Eventually, M gave up on Mary Kay. As soon as Mary Kay was officially announced as over for her, she became extremely bitter at me and my employer. Me for being her supervisor when we both started at the bottom, and my employer for hiring me in my current position when she had been employed with the company longer. Remember, she had not applied for the job she was mad she didn't have. She started demanding a title above mine, pay above mine, because she believed she deserved it. She did not want to take on additional responsibilities and did not believe she needed improvement on her current work. The office could not comply, of course. Her personality, which was once bubbly, was completely bitter and completely negative. I blame Mary Kay for the change in her personality. Of course my office has some negative things, but it's by far the best employer either of us have ever had. Livable wage, full benefits, excellent leave policy, oh, can I work there? <laughs> but as soon as she realized Mary Kay wasn't going to retire her early or eclipse her steady income, she grew to hate us, because she expected to move up and out extremely quickly and leave a 9 to 5 in the dust. Her career smashed to a halt for Mary Kay, and now she hates us because her plan with Mary Kay did not play out. I've read as many supervising books as I can find, spent time learning from those who have been supervising for decades, going to HR training, and I just have no success with M. At this point, I feel like there's no way to get through to the person who used to be a great worker and coworker. I hear through the grapevine she's looking for employment elsewhere, and I feel like a blank hoping she moves on. Whoa, okay. Well, my very initial reaction is just to say to you, the OP, like, you went above and beyond to try to help M. You really did. As a supervisor, you did everything you possibly could. You did your research. And frankly, you put the work in to get the job that you have. You did the cross training. You applied when it was time. You know, you put the experience in. You you put the work in and, and you've earned it. And it's just really unfortunate that M, as a grown adult, can't see that they are their own impediment in the situation here. I mean, obviously... Mary Kay is, is a huge problem. Clearly, we know that. But but she's mad at herself. That's why she got so angry after she left Mary Kay. She's mad at herself, but she's going to take it out on you, on your employer, and that's just kind of how it's going to go. And honestly, for the, for her, for M, 
she might not be able to get over this until she moves on and gets out of the situation and into something else and then can look back years later and go, woof, what did I do? You know, I mean, yeah, but no, you've done the right thing. You were an outstanding supervi supervisor. I would like to work for you. <laughs> can you hire me, please? <laughs> Ugh, I already hate this. <laughs> People get uncomfortable when I talk about being a millionaire by 25. I get uncomfortable when people talk to me about working a 9 to 5 and making someone else a millionaire. Dot, dot, dot. Hashtag sleep on me. What? Am I just really old? I really don't understand what that hashtag means. <laughs> hashtag I dare ya. It's not a good look, my dear. And I can tell you're young. And uh, hopefully when you're older, sometime in your 30s, you'll look back at this time in your early 20s and you'll be good and embarrassed and this will all be just a, a distant nightmare behind you. <laughs> but uh, so, um, are you a millionaire? And are, I, I'm curious though. <laughs> millionaire by 25, huh? Yeah, it's kind of odd how when you come out like that and start trying to flex, it is strange how people seem to not... Um, you know, like that, right? People don't seem to take that very well, you know, when you come out just bragging about how much money you have and how much they don't have. Yeah, people love that. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm, totally. I don't understand people. So I've worked for this company for a few years now and my boss is on her third or fourth MLM. She wants to quit, but here's the thing. She's in her mid-20s no degree, and makes nearly $70,000 before bonuses. She gets benefits, paid vacation, stock sharing, and a 401k, paid maternity leave, and she has won multiple paid in full trips for her and her husband that doesn't even come out of her vacation time. What? That's incredible. They would probably pay her tuition if she wanted to go to college too. How does someone want to give up a job like that to sell freaking vitamins? I don't know. That's a really good question. I'm as mystified as you. I mean, I'm 33 and I have wanted that type of security my entire life. So to have that in her mid twenties and to just be wanting to throw it away for an MLM is, oh, it's, it's just making my mind go blank. Like I, I can't even fathom. I, I honestly, I can't even fathom a world. <laughs> Hun tells me Arbon is non-synthetic so I can take her supplements. Background. I have been suffering from adult acne for a couple years in my 30s and have seen a dermatologist. As per his recommendation, I don't take any supplements with B12, as studies have shown that B12 in excess may further irritate skin and feed the bacteria that causes breakouts. Oh, wow, you learn something new every day, huh? He offered other medical advice, but the rest is irrelevant to the story. So I was roped into going to a Christmas party for my neighbor. Ugh. <laughs> Turns out that this party was an Arbon meet and greet for my neighbor who had just signed up. Naturally, her upline was there leading the party. I didn't want to be rude, as I do like my neighbor. She's a nice lady. So I stuck around, but I was a little annoyed that I was lied to about what this party actually was. Yeah, I would be too. Upline Hun was handing out cups with their caffeinated vitamin drink. I told her that I don't drink supplements with B12 and am uninterested. She asked why, of course. Then I proceeded to tell her about my adult acne. Refer to above. Oh my god, I'm sure we're about to get some really great Arbon advice about what to do about your acne. Oh, here we go. Baffled, she explained to me that this B12 is okay to take and won't cause problems because it is natural B12, not synthetic B12. Angered, I told her that she shouldn't try to make claims contrary to what a physician has ordered and she's going to get someone killed. Okay, a little overdramatic, then abruptly left. <laughs> I was later sent a text with an apology from Dr. Hun, where she offered me a discount on any product in her catalog to make up for it. Oh, please. You know that discount, something that they have sitting around. It's like, discount, what's my basis for comparison? Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> wow, how generous. I'm sorry that I potentially tried to give you something that would counteract your physician's orders uh, and all that. But like, you want a discount for the rest of this stuff that like may or may not be infused with this non-synthetic B12 that you can or can't have? <sighs> well, you know, I'm, sh I'm glad you're listening to your physician and you're seeing a dermatologist and uh, I wish you the best of luck. I'm sure all your skin issues are gonna work out, especially if you steer away from, from this ridiculous nonsense of non-synthetic B12 Arbon stuff, which you apparently already did, so you're ahead of the game. 
had an emergency visit to Planned Parenthood today only to be comforted by a lovely quote on the wall from none other than Mary Kay's founder. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you're right. I was in too much pain to say anything, but geez. <laughs> Wow, that is pretty obnoxious. I hope you're doing okay. Uh, it's I'm I'm unhappy to see that Mary Kay has infiltrated this establishment, but it's a wild world we live in. <laughs> but I really hope you're doing all right. Wish you the best. Uh, take care of yourself, okay? <laughs> My mom got a Christmas gift from her manager today. Oh snap! <laughs> DoTerra Thinker Focus Blend Roll On. <sighs> Well, based on the fact that your manager's giving this stuff out, there's a good chance that that person won't be a manager for too much longer. Oh, your mom's manager, excuse me. But, uh, well, there's a positive from this. I love that tissue paper. I'm all about that. I love that rainbow chrome situation with the, with the tissue paper. I love that. That's great. That's the only positive I can come away from this with. <laughs> I am going to do my absolute level best to read this without dry heaving. <laughs> I don't know who needs to hear this, but being in network marketing is not an insult that you hold over us, especially being part of an amazing, good company. So please, save yourself the embarrassment by trying to make others, especially your friends, feel bad for having a business. It's not a burn, lol. It's a gift to be able to work on your own time from anywhere and to be able to give it away to others. We are networking the same way the majority of- uh, No, 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 that's not true. That is not true. Sorry. <clears throat> Let me edit to help you start thinking. Every blogger, every makeup guru, Amazon influencer, Insta influencer, people that give you a discount code, anyone with a link in their bio, etc. And years ago, I did it for random companies because, oh, before I joined our- Oh, so you've been doing this MLM thing for a while. I see you just settled on Arbon. Got it. And sadly, wasn't compensated for what I was worth. We are actually having the time of our lives, and we aren't bothered. We are proud. Thank you. You know, whenever people come off this defensive, it just, I don't know, it doesn't add any credence to their argument. It just is like, well, you seem very, very, very defensive. So that makes me feel like that you have a nerve that's been touched here, <laughs> clearly. Well, clearly. <laughs> And, and do not compare yourself to other people who use networking, like bloggers or, I don't know, Insta influencers. I'm not even, you guys, I don't even have Instagram. I'm so out of touch. I'm not 100% sure what that really means. But if it's anything like YouTube influencers, I just, I mean, it's just, I think it's very strange to compare yourself to these people and then to also insult others while asking them not to insult you. Like you're basically making everybody look really, really dumb or trying to anyways, because it's not working. Cause you know who ends up looking dumb in this situation? <coughs> It'd be you sitting in front of your car who's now bragging uh, all over social media about how much money you have because, oh, it's so funny, but you have so many real friends. <laughs> It's time for everyone's favorite segment of the video. It's time for the wholesome moment of the day. Let's see who you guys sent over. The animals featured in today's video were sent over by Kimberly, and I'm going to go ahead and read the email sent along with the photos. Hi, Den Mother. I wanted to share my lovies with you. I have three currently, two pups and a bunny. Oh, cute. The fawn colored one is Jojo. He is nine years old and is very spoiled. He was the runt of his litter and he's such a cuddle bug. The bunny is Devante. My son saw her in a neighbor's yard five years ago and my husband and son caught her. She was fully litter box trained and was about a year old. Good catch on that one. <laughs> We figured someone dumped her at a nearby golf course. Aw, we love her so much. The last one is my beautiful girl, Shaka. We adopted her from a local shelter in our town. She is so gentle and very loving. She is a bit of a scaredy cat and tends to hide between me when she gets scared. That's okay by me because I would do anything to protect them. The sweet girl at the bottom is Maddie, our beloved Puggle. Recently, she crossed the Rainbow Bridge. We got her from a family who locked her in a cage all day. She had been trained to detect rattlesnakes, but they said they were too busy for her. Jojo and Shaka took to her instantly, and she immediately became one of our family. Her favorite things were belly rubs and eating. Oh. <laughs> Anytime anyone left the house, she would sing the song of her people <laughs> to let us know she was going to miss us. <laughs> oh my god, I'm getting weepy. <clears throat> we were lucky to have her for seven years, and I truly hope that they were 
and I truly hope that they were the best years of her life. Thanks for reading and sorry that it's so long. I truly believe animals only enhance our lives and even though it hurts when we have to let them go, it pales in comparison to the joy they bring. Have a great day. Oh, thank you, Kimberly. <laughs> I'm like literally crying. Everything's fine. You're fine. Hugs, everybody. Let's have a little internet hug moment. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking to get a new member of your family, I definitely recommend to adopt not shop. Check out your local shelters, your local humane societies. Donate if you can, volunteer if you can, foster if you can, and don't forget to spay and neuter your pets. And if you want to see a photo of your pets here, then go ahead and send it to my email in my channel description, and you will see your pets here eventually. All right, Fox Trotters, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you liked that video, please hit that like button down below. If you have any good comments or suggestions, please leave it down below as well. I love to hear what you have to say and I love interacting with you all. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button and become a Fox Trotter. Come join the den. Den Mother would love to have you. All right, I hope you folks enjoyed that video. I do have a special video that I am working on. I'll let you guys know about it in the next few days. Other than that, we will stick to regularly scheduled programming. And I will see you guys all safe and sound back in our little den. I love you all so very much and as always until the next video take care